Now, Japan is all set to begin pumping out more than a million tons of treated water from the destroyed Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. It is the site of the second worst nuclear disaster in history. How concerning is this? My colleague Shivin gets you the details. Thanks, Reisha. I'll take it from here. We're talking about, of course, the Fukushima water release, which is causing a lot of concern the world over, especially after they've got a head start on it. Japan is set to begin pumping out more than a million tons of treated water from the destroyed Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant this summer. The water has, was distilled after being contaminated from contact with fuel rods at the reactor, destroyed in a 2011 earthquake. Now, tanks on the site now hold about 1.3 million tons of radioactive water, enough to fill 500 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Here's how Japan plans to deal with the water here. Now, as per IAEA, the watchdog, the United Nations nuclear watchdog, Japan's plan to release treated water from the Fukushima nuclear plant into the sea meets international standards. IAEA says the controlled gradual discharges of the treated water to the sea would have a negligible radiological impact on people and the environment. The UN watchdog is pointing to similar releases by plants in the United States, France and China. Now the IAEA also reiterates and will open a permanent office at the Fukushima site to continuously monitor the release process. Fukushima operator TEPCO has been filtering the contaminated water to remove isotopes, isotopes, leaving only tritium behind. Now, tritium is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen that is hard to separate from water. TEPCO will dilute the water until tritium levels fall below regulatory limits before pumping it into the ocean from the coastal site. Now, water containing tritium is routinely released from nuclear plants around the world, and regulatory authorities support dealing the Fukushima water in this way. Now, tritium is considered to be relatively harmless because it does not emit enough energy to penetrate human skin. Now, that is the claim that is being made. However, in 2014, a Scientific American article said that when ingested, Tritium can raise cancer risks, and that is a major concern that a lot of people, and especially nations around, neighboring nations, are having at the moment with this decision that has come in. The water disposal will take decades to complete with a rolling filtering and dilution process, alongside the planned decommissioning of the plant. The release remains controversial. There's no doubt in that, with Beijing vocally criticizing the plans. A lot of nations have made their criticism vocal here. China says Japan should jointly explore a scientific, safe and transparent method. Some in South Korea are panic buying salt over fears of contamination after the discharge begins. Fishing communities in Fukushima are also really, really concerned here. Their main concerns are also they're worried basically about customers which will shun their catches despite strict testing protocols for food from the region. Now, we are going to discuss this further. And for more on this, so we are now being joined by Professor Tillman Ruff from Melbourne. Professor Ruff is a co-president of International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. Thank you very much. Professor, radioactive forms of hydrogen and carbon have not been filtered out from the water. Now, this is exactly what they've mentioned. What will be the key concerns of this release, which will have elements of uh, carbon-14 and tritium? Yes. T unfortunately, the Japanese government and TEPCO, the operator of the plant, have not been fully transparent about exactly what is in the water. Uh, that will be discharged and how effectively the purification system works. So the concern is that any discharge of radioactive material into the environment increases the exposure to plants and animals, to the food chain, to people uh, who catch fish and who are exposed to to products um, and animals grown in that in that water, fisheries in particular, very important around the Pacific Rim. And this will add to the radioactive burden uh, for people who derive no benefit uh, from this discharge. And once it's in the ocean environment, um, some tritium does become organically bound in molecules, which means it lasts longer and it concentrates up the food chain. Um, it does have rather uh, non-penetrating radiation, as you mentioned, 
But there's very clear evidence and a very large international review was just published of all of the biological evidence of effects of tritium and it's the same as any other radioactive material. It has long-term effects in causing genetic harm and cancer increases in exposed organism. Any form of radiation is harmful. So the concern is that this is essentially an old-fashioned inappropriate dumping of radioactive material into the ocean in a way that's uncontrolled and will cause transboundary and potentially transgenerational increase in risks of cancer and chronic disease for people around the Pacific Rim. Right, Professor. Talk to us about how concerning is this? It is, uh, it is the site of the second worst nuclear disaster in history, especially with criticism coming in uh, from South Korea and China. Yes, and also the Pacific Islands Forum, the, the grouping of all of the 15 Pacific Island nations has been very concerned about this and appointed an independent expert scientific panel, which I think has been truly independent and has raised some very serious concerns about both TEPCO and the government's approach, but also the, the lack of scientific rigour and independence of the IAEA. And there was, in addition, a, a report released uh, on the 1st of June by an anonymous whistleblower, which suggests um, its veracity is not confirmed. The Japanese government says it's a forgery, but we don't know that for sure. But it suggests a significant degree of collusion between the IAEA and Japanese uh, nuclear vendors and the government in terms of sanitising this, uh, this planned release to allay public concerns. Um, so this is a problem and IAEA I think is we should be skeptical about its position as a supposedly independent watchdog its charter includes both regulation but also promotion of of nuclear um, uses of nuclear technology so in many areas the IAEA has not acted independently and even though its report released yesterday says that this is not an endorsement or a recommendation. If you look at this large glossy report, if you look at the uh, very highly produced uh, glowing videos that the IAEA has released on this, uh, it very clearly is endorsing uh, this. And I think part of that is that, as, as was mentioned, uh, tritium is the, the last substance that's released in largest quantities from operating nuclear power plants. It's released routinely in the cooling water. so. It is an issue that, that challenges the operation of, of the nuclear programs in many countries. And I think many would prefer that there were not um, a hard light shone on those practices. Um, so Ruff, they've been keen. Yes. Yeah, Professor Ruff, now you mentioned tritium. I just want to take it from there, tritium and carbon-14. If you could just pinpointedly explain to us what kind of effects do these radioactive elements have on sea life and human life and the nations which will be most affected by it nearby? Yes. Radioactivity comes in many different forms from many different substances. Um, the effects, though, uh, are largely the same. It causes genetic damage. It damages the large complex DNA and other molecules that define who we are and regulate our biological processes. And that's true for plants and animals um, of all types. The long-term effects... Um, associated with, with that damage are uh, increases in chronic disease uh, in humans, a uh, variety, particularly heart attacks and strokes, um, and also an increase in most cancers, almost all cancers. And those increased risks continue for the life of the exposed person. Um, once that effect has occurred, it's not possible to undo. It may be very difficult to detect or measure those effects, but every little bit of extra radiation um, should be avoided where possible uh, because it does increase the long-term risks of cancer and chronic disease. And there are good alternatives, I would argue, for this ocean release which have not adequately been explored or considered. Right, Professor, thank you so much for joining us on We're On and sharing insights with us on this. Thanks very much. Thank you.